Um, I'll just be very brief. This project um, um, it has been delayed. Uh, it has been in I thought normally I have a pretty high voice, so um, it has been a little bit more complicated than uh, unusual with a mortality, mortality rate of 75 percent because uh, we started it uh, here in Cyprus and then we went back to Istanbul. And uh, it was very interesting to create the framework in Istanbul uh, for a project that was looking at the relationship between uh, uh, two different kind of diasporas. Um, we ended up with two different projects. Chaldar is one of my students, is also one of my collaborators. And, uh, um, this has been an interesting process. So we were thinking of talking in detail about the collaboration itself, but that's something that you can ask us about later on. Instead, what we thought that it was important, we both started to think about two major ideas. One is the impossibility of understanding this picture, what is happening. The other thing is the process of erosion, of organic decay. And uh, the third element, I guess, is the utopia of the place that one has to go back to if that place really exists. So these were the concepts that informed, uh, uh, informed the work. And uh, that's the presentation that they will uh, uh, provide you with. Thank you. Hello, everybody. My name is Chow Architon, it's hard to pronounce. Uh, and first of all, I would like to thank uh, one more time to Alain Franco Archetti because without this encouragement, I couldn't reveal this project. And also thanks to the organizers. It's great to be here after a hard uh, process, visa process. Um, I would like to talk about trauma as a political tool and parodic art as a response. It will be a very short glimpse uh, to okay. parody. Uh, written a small picture, it's uh, my art project. And um, in my presentation, I have a question through uh, my artwork. Um, if art may use trauma, moving beyond the framework of reproduction of power, and if parody could be the answer to uh, create a different discourse or for an alternative identity constructions uh, of aesthetics in response to trauma. Because when art has its subject, trauma following political violence, how can the um, artwork set itself apart from power that is permanent cause of trauma? Uh, I think we are all familiar with the conceptualization of Michel Foucault, but briefly, uh, power has to control, organize and op optimize the individual's uh, biological life and individual's biological life and man its management of it are indispensable for power to exist. And similarly to the process of uh, remembrance and memorialization, trauma is obliged to become an instrument for power. Trauma and victimization play a part in, uh, in the construction of the politics of memory and the construction of the identity. According to Graham Dawson, power reuses trauma for, of political violence while turning it into a means that installs called political narratives about past, present and the future." Unquote. Considering the fact that trauma following political violence is not only a result, but also it means uh, it's a, um, powers means of reproduction. Artwork dealing with uh, trauma may become instrumental to political and institutional powers. So, for me, as an artist, is there an escape from the instrumentalization? When I uh, started to look closely what had historically happened in Cyprus, um, I have heard about these events, um, contradictory news and dreamers since my childhood. But I have found myself confronted with forced migration, casualties and ecological destruction that the massive governmental violence is capable of causing. And uh, like Alice, I tumbled down the hall. But the whole of uh, the impossibility of speaking of the, of the facts. Nevertheless, um, I really like 
a point of view, it's Mark Hubbard's. Silence is nothing other than the continuation of violence by other means. So, will it be possible to speak without being included in a hegemonic discourse? If art approaches trauma to understand its causes, trauma makes itself reasonably understandable. Any expression or assistance to trauma offered by art sets forth that it is possible to explain and help it, and it steers our fo focus away from the continuous existence of the cause, the exercise of power. Uh, I'm not going to read the quote, but while being accountable, comprehensible, and helpable brings an acceptability to the presence of trauma, which reveal the, uh, sorry, to the presence of trauma, artworks which reveal the wounds of trauma and in some ways which uh, cuddle spiritual well-beings of those who are affected should be questioned if they are really against power or melting in it by exploiting trauma. And it may be claimed that reminiscent, understanding, bonding and even therapeutic approach reproduce the exercise of power and its violence. And I find very interesting the feminist discourse, which debates in what ways the identity construction is possible in hegemony. Um, Table a method, parody, and according to Judith Butler, and not subversive by itself. It's very interesting that trauma and parody both constitute themselves in repetitions. And um, according to Amy Tang, trauma is an unconscious and uncontrolled uh, repetition of the past, and parody as a method for art dealing with trauma may correlate with opposing assumptions about the forms of agency of the discriminated subject. Accepting parody for an answer means accepting that the opposition is complicitous. But the, uh, but the possibility of subversion, if there is any, can spring from within the system. And I have designed uh, a small picture by repeating not a representation of art, but of politics, forced migration, from a parallel perspective in a microscopic dimension. A small picture is a photographic installation that I'm going to share some uh, pictures from the process with you soon. Um, that describes a narrative of the relocation of mold specimens. Mold specimens were taken, were collected from a new home in Turkey of people who had been forced uh, to leave their village in Cyprus. The mold was proliferated in petri dishes, and the mold is traveled uh, from Turkey to northern Cyprus, and it is relocated. Uh, on the rotting walls of an abandoned house. The uh, representation of the entire process is made evident via the camera's display screen with a single image that bears testimony to all of the steps of this relocation. From the first photograph onwards, each image is nestled within an historical series of documenting the process. So I would like to share the process. And the printed and intangible last image is a small picture exhibited only through its medium, the small display screen of the camera, uh, thus becoming very perceptible and certainly questionable in its ability to represent the project story and the lens history. And to me, uh, what is unpredictable is what kind of a connection the audience, audience will establish with more samples that were uh, forced to relocate. Um, parties are generally accused of taking into consideration on their own sorrows. In other words, they are accused uh, of focusing on a catastrophe uh, that happened to people they are able to identify with. So being unable to predict the audience's response to the image is probably the strongest motivation that lies under a small picture. And the camera which is installed in the exhibition hall is an answer to the undertaken issue of memory by museums and art exhibitions. And it narrates a story by its display screen with its 
very problematic visibility and uh, individuality. And to conclude, accepting that trauma following political violence is not only a result, but also a tool for the reproduction of power, artworks dealing with trauma confront the possibility of abusing trauma and being included within the remits of institutionalized power. Artworks may generate the acceptability of trauma's existence by establishing it as explainable, helpable, and understandable phenomenon. Artworks may magnify the power of authoritarian groups. But if there will be a response, an artistic response to power, political violence, and trauma, the strategies to build that response may be found through the analysis of repetition. So thank you.